Avenue. And then we'll take it higher. The Game Sports Show is pleased to shout out a partner, additional home, and sponsor to Northern Superior Brewing Company, located on 50 Pym Street in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Northern Superior Brewing Company having a strong presence locally with many beers to offer. With much involvement in the community of Sault Ste. Marie, Northern has a sport and friendly-like atmosphere within its tap room, and during the summer months, it is a must to visit Pier 55 to enjoy some delicious food, amazing view of the water, and view of the Bush Pulley Museum right on the cusp of the Hub Trail, and of course, all of that down with a delicious brew from Northern Superior. Northern Superior Brewing company it's a northern thing booyah and it's time for the game sports show the twin Sioux's only local regional and national sports show you're listening to the show on the game sports show.com the game sports show.poppy.com or through the scott nason youtube channel you may have also been directed here through one of our social media pages at the game sports show on facebook or at the game sports show sm on instagram either way we're very happy they're able to join us here tonight for the february 28th 2019 edition of the game sports show live from northern superior brewing company and its tap room it's yours truly, David McCaig, here live at Northern Superior Brewing Company, where it's a northern thing. And they got some delicious beer here on top. They got a great top room with a great projector here to watch the sporting event that's going on right now. We have the Leafs and Islanders getting ready to go underway here. It's a game that's going to be in the background. I have Justin Heichel, who's going to be joining us in the second part of the show. And it'll be myself and Justin for the remainder of the evening. Scott Neeson is our board operator tonight. And Blake Winter and John Cavalier are here present at Northern Superior Brewing Company, where they always do a fantastic job for the game sports show and also the customers that come through the door here at Northern Superior Brewing Company, where you have a chance to have a lot of different beers, as I mentioned. You can buy growlers, you can buy kegs, you can buy, there's different options you can buy here from Northern Superior Brewing Company where it's a northern thing and the beer is just fantastic. Delicious beer, it's locally crafted. Definitely come on down to Northern Superior, enjoy the presence of his tap room or at least come down and get some beer, people. The weekend is near. This means that you got to have some beer as the weekend is near. See what I did there? A little rhyme for you from David McCaig here live from Northern Superior Brewing Company for the Twins, who's only local, regional, and national sports show, the game sports show. Tonight, we have an action-packed show, as always. Myself and Justin, in the second part of the show, are going to be talking about the NHL trade deadline and its full entirety. In terms of our reactions, review of the trades, we're going to go through some of the trades that happened. Also, we're going to talk about some other bonus topics in the National Hockey League, including the New York Islanders fan base towards John Tavares and the Toronto Maple Leafs. You know, the Islanders are in action here tonight against the Toronto Maple Leafs, as the Toronto Maple Leafs are in action we're recording the show. We will have the show up uploaded if you do not hear it live. And you may hear it on Friday. So the game might be concluded. The game might go in John Tavares' favor or it might go in New York Islanders' favor. Either way, it's going to be an exciting game to watch. And also the fans are making a little rivalry when it comes to John Tavares and the Toronto Maple Leafs New York Islanders fans getting a little bit, let's say, snarly or a little bit upset now at John Tavares. It only took them over six months since the offseason, if that's eight plus months actually, to get a little frustrated. So Justin and I are going to talk about that in the second part of the show. But here on the opener of the show, I'm going to give you, the listeners, a little reminder of what's going on here in Sioux, Ontario, and also in Sioux, Michigan. And to end the first part of this show, before we go to break, I'm going to talk about a massive signing in the MLB that is rumored to be finalized, that I'm sure we're going to get some full... uh, updates on by potentially the end of the show or more going into Friday and it's a big signing and it involves the Philadelphia Phillies we're gonna get to that in just a few moments here the kick off the show here from Norton Superior Brewing Company I tell you guys if you're on the Podbean page we did have a show on Tuesday from Icebreaker Sports Bar and Grill we had an upload on that show we had some errors uploading the show through the social media pages so we apologize to listeners that would follow us through the social media that we could not get on those pages but since you're here now you can scroll down under and you can see the podcast upload through the game sports show if you didn't hear it live or if you didn't get the chance to hear it through one of our social media pages. Myself, Jamie Antonello, and Brad Cochmilio were live at Icebreaker Sports Bar and Grill where we were able to give you a full dissection of the local sports for the previous weekend and the upcoming games. And I will also be giving you a reminder listening, but if you want to listen to the entirety of the full 
recap of last weekend, what's coming up this weekend in its entirety, as I mentioned. Scroll down and listen to that show where Brad jumped on the show with myself and Jamie and also some reaction from Jamie and I in terms of the world of sports. Tonight, as I mentioned, reminder of what's going on locally. And speaking of what's going on locally, I'm going to kick it off right now. I'm going to give congratulations to the St. Mary's Knights high school team who defeated the Cora Colts to win the city championships. And you know, it was a good hard fought series by both teams. St. Mary's ended up coming on top. As you can follow at Core Hockey and also with St. Mary's, this championship series was everything as it was broadcasted to be. Two good hockey teams that went at it, competitive series. And with St. Mary's walking away, uh, they get to move on and play some more hockey this season. Core Colts, you know, they had a good hard-fought season. Congratulations for making it to the finals as well and putting up a good hard-fought series. But as I mentioned, congratulations to the St. Mary's Knights for walking away and crowned the city champions. And you can also get some more news on that on the Sioux Stars today. And also, if you need some more information, you can reach out to yours truly here on the game, Sports Show, and direct you in some articles and some more reaction. Going into more local updates here in terms of the world of sports in the NOJHL. And we're going to start with the Sioux Thunderbirds. The Sioux Thunderbirds were in action this past Wednesday against Espinola. They won 5-3 to three on the road, which was yesterday. And they played Tuesday against Blind River, where we were live at Icebreaker Sports Bar and Grow, where they defeated Blind River by a score of 2-1. to one. The Sioux Thunderbirds do play Friday, this Friday, March the 1st, at Sioux, Michigan, at good old Polar Stadium at 7.30. They're also home on Saturday, March the 2nd, as they play host to the Sioux Michigan Eagles at the John Rhodes Community Center. And that will be the alumni game day. And speaking of the alumni game, will be at 3.30. You have the former Thunderbirds out on the ice. As a matter of fact, we played there for a year, five years, if you're Jerry Patingalo, or any kind of such. You sign up to play in this game, 3.30. Yours truly, Dave McKaig, will be there at the alumni game at 3.30 at the John Rose. It'll be prior to the Sioux Thunderbirds' last home game of the season. And the Sioux Thunderbirds round out their season on Wednesday against the Blind River Beavers, which will be at 7 o'clock Wednesday the 6th. But again, as I mentioned, Saturday, March the 2nd, you got to make sure you come out and check an extra special day at the John Rhodes Community Center. As the alumni, after they play, they will be upstairs at Icebreaker Sports Bar and Grill for a social afterwards. So come on and say hello to yours truly and also more of the Sioux Thunderbirds alumni teammates. Now, moving on from the Sioux Thunderbirds, going into the Sioux Eagles. The Sioux Eagles play this weekend, as I mentioned, Friday against the Thunderbirds, 7.30 at Sioux, Michigan at Polar Stadium, 7 o'clock Saturday against the Sioux Thunderbirds at the Rhodes, as I mentioned. They also play Sunday against Elliott Lake on the road, which will be at 7 o'clock, and they also round out their season Tuesday against the Rayside Balfour Canadians, a game that was postponed and rescheduled as the Sioux Eagles hope to finish their season strong as well. This is Thunderbirds clinching the regular season championship and their division, getting ready to hopefully finish their season off strong as well going into the playoffs. Very competitive games are the Eagles with Thunderbirds. Very excited to watch those both those games. If you are looking to watch some good NLJHL action, look no further than down the road to the John Rhodes or over the border at Sioux Michigan. Speaking of Sioux, Michigan, we're going to talk about Lake City here quick. They play 7 o'clock this Friday against Ferris State. 7 o'clock Friday and 7 o'clock on Saturday, March the 2nd. And that's once again against Ferris State. It'll be their last regular season games before Friday, March the 8th, which is to be announced the WCHA quarterfinals. I'm going to have a full dissection next week from Icebreakers, Sports Bar, and Grill with that. The Sioux Greyhounds play host this past Wednesday, which was yesterday against Saginaw. They lost 5-3 to three to Saginaw on home soil, and the Saginaw Spirit have now tied the Sioux St. Marie Greyhounds in the conference and for the division lead. The Sioux St. Marie Greyhounds are hoping to hope to bounce back on Friday as they play host to Ottawa at 7-07, and Sunday they play against the Owen Sound Attack at 2-07, both games at the GFL Memorial Gardens. Also, make sure you get out to check those games. If you can't make it across the river to watch the Sioux Eagles or LSSU, you can stay here and watch the Sioux Greyhounds on Friday. And then on Sunday, you know, you have the Hounds playing. There's no Thunderbirds action. No excuse to go out and watch the Sioux St. Marie Greyhounds. On Saturday, you have no excuse to go watch the Lake State Lakers or the Eagles or the Thunderbirds. Lots of action local here in Sioux, Ontario, as there always is. As it gets down to the grind, as we like to call it here on the Game Sports Show, the local playoffs in terms of the Thunderbirds, 
the Eagles, LSSU, and the Hounds are just around the corner. And obviously the playoffs in those entirety of the leagues and WCBHA slash NCAA, as well as the NOJHL and also the OHL nears up. And what a battle we have for the Sioux Greyhounds of Saginaw coming down. As I mentioned, the Hounds and Saginaw are destined, it seems, to be a second-round matchup potentially, which would be absolutely unbelievable. We know Saginaw has a little bit of hunger towards the Sioux St. Marie Greyhounds. So if the Greyhounds can get past Saginaw in the second round, I do like their chances to get to the OHL championship. Moving on from the local hockey perspective, if you have any questions in regarding to local hockey, once again, don't hesitate to comment below or reach out to myself, Scott Nason, or the crew here on the Game Sports Show. The awesome staff here will be glad to talk sports to you or give you a reminder of what's going on and also to direct you to those respective organizations, representatives, if you want to purchase tickets in advance or get arrangements to have tickets put aside for you. Moving on from, as I mentioned, the local side, we're going to jump into the MLB right now. Usually everyone who knows this as listeners, that we do the three up, three down in this Thursday edition from Northern Superior Brewing Company. We will not have a three up, three down at the end of the show. We will not have a, a multiple choice segment as well due to just being myself and Justin. So I have moved some MLB reaction here to the forefront of the first part of the show. And the reason why is... Since baseball segment is mostly spearheaded by yours truly, and having Justin come in in the second part, it'd be kind of unfair to Justin to throw him in to have that reaction as it's just me who wants to hog the mic right now for some MLB news. Bryce Harper has apparently going to be signing a 13-year, $330 million deal. Wow. I would like 1% of that, first off, if there's any way, based on this lot of talk we've had all summer about Harper, Machado, a lot of news going on in the MLB. Another piece of news I'm going to share quickly before I forget to do it, because I'm going to be reacting about Bryce Harper. Bud Norris, Clay Buchholz have signed with the Toronto Blue Jays. Some more pitching depth for the Blue Jays. You see that they're signing some of these guys. Buchholz may be in the bullpen. He may be in the rotation. Buchholz used to be a prominent starter in the MLB. But Norris, same thing. I'd like to see them battle for some starting positions with the Toronto Blue Jays, as they certainly have the potential to do that. I wouldn't be surprised if the Jays tried to dash a little bit more in terms of some free agents that are out there with pitching or some players as they hope to remain competitive in the AL East with the Yankees and Red Sox to spearheading. Kind of curious how the Blue Jays take this year after Troy Tulowitzki decided to hit a home run off Marcus Stroman in spring training. I've never seen Tulowitzki be that excited since the playoffs against the Texas Rangers. Basically, it's the last time I've seen Troy Tulowitzki play a baseball game. Sarcastic, obviously, but I wonder how good he's actually going to be. How could hey, okay, okay, you hit a home run off Marcus Stroman in first at bat in spring training. Good for you. It's spring training. You're that excited, you're that animated about the Toronto trading you, and they're also paying you to play for the Yankees. We'll see if you last over 60 games in the MLB this season. I don't think he does. I, I'm really doubtful that he does. I'm hoping he does because I have respect for Troy Tulowitzki, but I don't think he will. I want you to comment below if you think he's going to last, but Troy Tulowitzki, nah, 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 nah. i tell you right now, Troy Tulowitzki had a good bat there against Marcus Stroman. He is trying to battle back. He has a good team to do it with with the Yankees, but I can't see him being healthy all year. Unless he sat out all year and he was faking his injury, then he might play all year because he literally just rested and probably did nothing. Curious to see how Troy does. How do you think he's going to do? Blue Jays signings, Buck Colts and Norris. How you? How do you feel? I like them. I like those movies. Any kind of depth you want to add with those guys that actually have a good resume, good to add to the bullpen or to the starting rotation. It makes me seem like the Jays are going to have a team that can play some good contact baseball, get on base, win the small ball games. If you have good pitching in the bullpen and also starting, you have good solid pitching throughout, let's say, three out of five games. Maybe you do make a run for a wild card, but I'm not holding my breath with that. The Blue Jays are in that refazing kind of mode. I think it's still two or three years away before we see some more exciting baseball come out of the Rogers Center. But I got to go back to Bryce Harper here, okay? I, I, I got a couple more minutes left on this part of the show before I got to go to break and bring in Justin Heichel here. Bryce Harper has gotten paid, baby. He's gotten paid. He's getting some big dough. Bry hey, Bryce, if you're ever shy, man, if you need to get rid of any money, if you got too much, don't hesitate. I live in Sioux, Ontario. You, I, you know, you can send it to my parents' place 
or you can send it to my current location. Doesn't matter. You can send it anywhere and put an address to the Gain Sports Show or to Dave McKay because I, I, you just got a massive payday, my friend. Are you past your prime? I don't think you're really past your prime. I think, you know, you have some good baseball left in you. And baseball is a little bit of a different sport, okay? Bryce Harper, when he, he signed this contract, he's 26 years old. He will be signed until he's 39 years old with this contract, okay? And those of you who know math, 330 divided by 13 is $25.38 million, which is actually less than an annual value of Manny Machado. However, it depends how the payout's going to go on the contract and how that's going to get released. We're going to get more news when it comes to that. I don't have this news currently up to date here. Producer Ghost and Scott Nason all telling me about this update and me looking into the full disclosure of the release of him potentially signing with the Phillies here and going to be signing actually should be the term I'm using. The Phillies... When they finalize this deal and actually officially gets released as a final deal, as base, it is done. Okay, it's gonna, it's signed. It's it's signed. It's got to be released to the public. We're getting a star right fielder. They're getting someone who can bat third, fourth in their order. Who's gonna belt thirty plus home runs. He's gonna belt a hundred plus RBIs. And now that you've signed Bryce Harper in the city of Philadelphia. You have signed somebody who can be an attractive piece for your team in terms of signing free agents or even trading for more. They'll have interest to actually play in your organization. I've never doubted Philly. They've always been a good, respected organization in baseball. You know, that's where Doc Holliday last played. They had some good runs. They've had success in there in the early thousands, obviously. But the Phillies are trying to get to that point. They have a lot of good young stars there in Philadelphia. Bryce Harper being there is a big addition to the team. And this signing is not as ludicrous as many people think. The only thing that's ludicrous, yeah, the money's nuts. Okay, the money is nuts. But this is this is sport. This is baseball. A-Rod signed a 10-year, $300 million contract. That's when everyone started bitching about it. And now everyone's starting. you got Jarkal Stanton making the same money. You have Manny Machado making the same money. Bryce Harper essentially making the same money. Just a bit less based on more term. This is how it is in baseball, okay? People are disgusted by the value, but that's how it is. We can't change that. What I look at in terms of science, how the potential and the progress is going to be. Honestly, Mike Trout is the best all-around baseball player playing today. I really think if there's anybody built like he was back in the previous days of baseball, he'd be one of the best, if not the best, baseball players to ever play the game of baseball. All due respect to Babe Ruth and all the legends, Mike Trout is an absolute machine all over the field. Fielding, batting, everything. I don't even need to get into full dissection there. Harper is not that far back in terms of being one of the best players or all-around players in baseball. You know, you got a lot of guys that are up there in terms of that. People can argue Manny Machado. People can argue Mookie Betts, Ben Attendee, Jacaro Stanton, a lot of names. But I really think Bryce Harper is a top three player in the in the Major League Baseball Association. I, I will tell you right now, Major League Baseball is ludicrous for its money value that people are being paid. But at the end of the day, these guys are getting paid that. Bryce Harper is signed with the Phillies until he's 39 years old. I don't know how old you are, listeners, particularly listeners that are listening, but 13 years from now, I'm going to be 40 years old. Okay, I'm going to be 40 years old. Harper is one year younger than myself. He'll be retiring with $330 million in his bank account. Let me tell you, I ain't going to be retiring with $330 million in the bank account unless I strike it rich on the Powerball in the United States or the lottery here in Canada, which is not even close to being as much, or if I somehow strike it rich with something else. And I have respect for Bryce Harper as a talent, but the term is what I find difficult. 13 years, if I, I maybe that's what they had to do to bring in Bryce Harper, but I really feel that if I'm a general manager, and this is going to be different in terms of baseball because Manny probably only signed for that 10 years because of it being that 10 years, I don't think I would have went above 10 years with Bryce Harper. 
Even if it would have cost me a bit more money, maybe 10 years, $310 million, give him that extra payday. I, I don't know if you want to lock him up there in Philadelphia for that, but he's going to be there until he's 39, and he's under contract until then. Will Harper be effective when he's 39 years old? Maybe. Maybe he will be. All things pointing that he is going to be. Absolutely, and I don't have a doubt in my mind that he would be, but we don't know what's going to happen that 13 years. That's a big commitment. You sign someone to 13 years in hockey, which obviously you can't. The max is eight in a contract. But, for example, Rick DiPietro, a lot of names out there that did not work out those long-term now. This is baseball, not hockey. But Bryce Harper is now the franchise face of the Philadelphia Phillies. They have good young talent. I like what they're doing. They got some good pitching, and they're probably not done. They are probably not done. Not that they have a whole bunch of money to spend, but Dallas Keuchel, for example, okay, with still being a free agent, there's a lot of rumors about him being reached out to the Cubs, the Cardinals. But now I wonder if the Padres are in on that too. Or if the Phillies are. They just landed two of the big free agent cookies. Maybe they want to get that extra umph. Maybe Dallas Keiko wants the AL East. Does the Blue Jays make a hit? No. Because if so, I bet you they would have. But now that Harper is in Philly... Players are going to want to go there and win. There were some troubling times in Philadelphia the last couple of years in baseball, and it made it all worth it. You've developed your youth. You've now made a big splash for somebody that you hope plays the same way. If Harper, from the age of 35 to 39, and in those four years of playing, if he still gets 20 home runs and above 60 RBI, you've actually gotten a good deal. Because you know until he's 35, he's going to belt 30. He's a freak of nature. He's an athlete. A lot of veterans have had success with home runs and batting. And I really think that Harper can bring some multiple championships to Philadelphia. But Philly is still not ahead of the Red Sox. I don't even think they're ahead of the Astros or the Yankees in the AL. The Padres know they're not either. But they got a lot of good youth to both those teams. And Philly, they'll bring in Harper, is going to be a changing point for those Phillies. I think that the signing is a lot, but the money value is not as high as people think or may have been. I want to know what you think. Does Bryce Harper hit 30 plus this year? Does he win a championship in Philly within five years is the question. I think if Philly wins one championship in five years, They're going to win multiple after that, probably, because everyone will be developed. I would be surprised if they didn't win one in five years. Heck, I might even say they might win one in three years. Next year, no. The year after, no. But that second year, they're going to be very close. That third to five year is where that first championship is coming in. If they don't win one in that five-year ratio, Harper might not bring a championship to Philly because if all the young guys need to get re-signed, the cap, they still have money to follow. It's a little bit different in baseball, yes, but their window is five years to bring in that one or two championships home. I may be wrong, but I like the signing. Philly, congratulations. He's got the biggest, in my opinion, free agent on the market. I think he's bigger fish than Manny Machado is, and I'm curious now if the Phillies are still going to add a little bit more. Dallas Keuchel still out there. If the Padres, Phillies, Cubs, Cardinals, any teams are going to be making a swing at Dallas Keuchel. Very interesting. Spring training is still around the corner to being finished about a month ago in terms of spring training or so. It makes me curious at the end of the day how the overall spring training and the players that are still available, where they're going to go and how that's going to shape up the MLB. Harper's Everything will be released, I'm sure, by potentially the end of the show or 
by tomorrow, I'd imagine when everything's official with the news conference going into the weekend, I imagine Harper's number 34 will be donned in Philadelphia. Philly got a big fish and well deserved. They hunted all summer for him. And it seems like they're always in the mix. People didn't think they would get it. They swung out and missed on Manny Machado. They did land Harper. They made that extra couple years to probably give them an extra payday. And that's probably what put it over the edge. See how it goes, though. It's not always a lock. Dave McKeg here live from Northern Superior Brewing Company, where it's a northern thing. I'm going to take a quick break. Sip on this delicious beer here from Northern Superior Brewing Company, live from the top room, the Twin Two's only local, regional, and national sports show. When I come back for the second part of the show, Justin Heichel will be joining us here on the game sports show. And if you're listening to us through the website or popping page, we're going to say to listen to previous episodes of the game. This past Tuesday, we had a show at Icebreakers Sports Bar and Grill. Next week, we will be back to our full load of schedules. Four shows. Wicked Sister Monday. Icebreakers Tuesday, Sports Center Wednesday, back here on Thursday at Northern, back to the four shows a week. Going to be action packed as a playoff time is around the corner for hockey, for basketball, baseball being just around the corner, local sports, NOJHL, OHL, WCHA, lots going on next week with our four shows and the criteria and for the foreseeable future, there's a lot going on. Not just in terms of the show, but the local perspective in sports and national sports. We have some big agendas coming up here on the show as well. We do have some planned dates to get some more local figures to come on the show in the very near future. Colin Miller, Jarrett Burton, just to name a couple. Then we'll have some dates finalized and released to the public, hopefully by early next week. As I mentioned, Dave McCaig, you're live. Norris Beer Brewing Company. We're going to take a quick break. As I mentioned, we're going to hear from our sponsors, pay some bills. And then when I come back, Justin Heichel will be joining me. Don't go anywhere. The Game Sports Show is pleased to shout out a partner, additional home, and sponsor to Northern Superior Brewing Company, located on 50 Pym Street in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Northern Superior Brewing Company having a strong presence locally with many beers to offer. With much involvement in the community of Sault Ste. Marie, Northern has a sport and friendly-like atmosphere within its tap room, and during the summer months, it is a must to visit Pier 55 to enjoy some delicious food, amazing view of the water, and view of the Bush Pulley Museum right on the cusp of the Hub Trail, and of course, all of that down with a delicious brew from Northern Superior. Northern Superior Brewing company it's a northern thing the game sports show would like to thank an additional sponsor and special edition home to the game silver creek golf course located on 104 bellow lake road garden river ontario and also shout out thank you to silver creek gm jamie henderson silver creek golf course has many specials to offer for 18 holes nine holes and even twilight deal specials it does not matter what your level of golf game is it is a must to enjoy the scenic course memorable experiences that silver golf course offers silver creek also also offers a Thursday wing night for you to enjoy food after a stellar time on the course. You can book your tea time by phone or online at GolfSilverCreek.com. Silver Creek Golf Course, where all are welcome to play. The Game Sports Show wants to thank its original home, partner and sponsor since 2015, Sports Center Bar and Grill, named the Sioux's best sports bar for three years in a row. Sports Center Bar and Grill is located on 624 Wellington Street West in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Make sure to come on down to Sports Center to enjoy the great atmosphere with great cold beverages available, including those delicious Molson products. Don't forget about their famous 75 cent wing nights on Wednesdays. They're truly the best wings in town. Like and follow Sports Center on Facebook at Sports Center SSM. We look forward to seeing you today. Sports Center Bar and Grill, the Sioux's best sports bar. Get Wicked Catering from the crew at the Wicked Sister. We like to think of ourselves as foodies. While our favorite foods are paired with a beer tasting at the Wicked Sister, you can now have the same creative menu for your next catered business luncheon, family get-together, wedding, or holiday party. Our white truffle risotto appeals to your gluten-free and vegetarian guests. Add sautéed shrimp or freshly grilled chicken for a pop of protein. Or let us build you a custom menu to suit your needs. From plated events of 15 to buffets for cheese, 200, the Wicked Sister will cater your event with tapas, snacks, craveables, or a full sit-down dinner. The Wicked Sister, where you'll be treated like family, whether you like it or not. The Game Sports Show would like to thank a list of additional sponsors. North Shore Sports and Auto, new location located on 647 McDonald Avenue, Sault Ste. Marie. A family-owned and operated business with doing business in Sault Ste. Marie for over 10 years. Loads of products available for your enjoyment for all seasons. North Shore Sports and Auto, we understand the importance of quality service and products, and we work hard to ensure that all customers have a positive experience before, 
and after each and every sale. North Shore Sports and Auto, meeting all of your new and pre-owned equipment needs. Special thanks to the salon. The salon, located on 589 Second Line East, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. Owned and operated by Mike Cuglietta. Book your appointment today at 705-941-9191 or via online at https colon dash dash the salon sue dot as dot me dash the salon making the suit beautiful one haircut at a time as well as a shout out to the superior pro shop the superior pro shop located inside a community first credit union superior arena on 285 northern avenue east to st marie ontario owned and operated by jeremy paquin and ran by larry monroe superior pro shop for over 40 years meet all of your skate sharpening skate repair and hockey needs also to discover the canvas discover the canvas Located on 317 Wellington Street West, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. A beautiful new renovated building owned and operated by expert artist and Sioux native Katrina Tipito. Katrina taking her talents of the ink in Sault Ste. Marie and truly creating the best and most realistic art locally. Call Katrina today at 705-450-8099 or email her at discoverthecanvas at gmail.com to book your tattoo or consultation today. Hi, this is Joe Bowen, and you're listening to the Game Sports Show from Sault Ste. Marie. Welcome back to the Game Sports Show, the Twin Sioux's only local, regional, and national sports show. We are live at North Superior Brewing Company, as I touched on here in the first part of the show. And now I'm here joined, however, by one of my good friends, one of my co-hosts, Justin Heichel, who's been battling the flu for basically the entire month of February. But he made the truck over to Northern Superior Brewing Company. He's sitting with me here in the tap room enjoying a nice, delicious Northern Superior Brewing Park, the 55 lager. Justin, how are you doing, sir? I'm trying out a nice glass of Northern Superior here to see if it uh, cures my uh, ailments and uh, see, uh, see how we feel at the end of the show. We are a rough group right now. You battling the flu, Dane battling the flu, me battling a back injury with my SI joint, my facet joints, and all these other joints that I don't even know if actually exist. But despite all that, we're all a little bit, uh, a little bit wounded. It seems like and it's not because of the game sports show; it's just because of the daily life activities that we're around and sometimes get stuck with, like yourself with the flu. But Justin, the NHL trade deadline has just passed and as i touched on in the first part of the show we're going to jump in and do a full reaction here on the nhl trade deadline and we're going to do some thoughts and reactions in general throughout the national hockey league with this updated news etc and i want to jump in and i'm not going to start with the trades that didn't happen in terms of some teams aka the toronto maple leafs whom did make one move tampa bay lightning didn't make a move there's some teams that didn't make those big splashes like the Las Vegas Golden Knights, Nashville Predators, just to name a couple teams that made some splashes there because we're going to go through it all. And speaking of those trades, you had Stone go to Vegas along with Tobias Lindbergh for top prospect Eric Brandstrom, Oscar Lindbergh, and a 2022nd round pick for, for the Ottawa Senators. Going back the other way, you had... Grandland get traded from the Minnesota Wild going to Nashville Predators for Kevin Fiala. Wayne Simmons goes to Philadelphia Flyers for Ryan Hartman and a conditional fourth that could turn into a third round pick. Adam McQuaid goes to the Columbus Blue Jackets for Julius Borkman for, and a fourth and a seventh round pick. Derek Broussard and a conditional sixth goes to Colorado. Back to Florida for a 2023rd. You have Cliff Plue going over to Florida. Thomas Yurko going over to Carolina from Florida for future consideration. Kevin Hayes with the Winnipeg Jets before a 2019 first, conditional 2022 fourth, and Brandon Lemieux, who actually had a very good uh, debut in New York last night in terms of his presence on the ice. Keith Kincaid goes over the Columbus Blue Jackets from the New Jersey Devils. They have Corpusalo, Bobrovsky, and Kincaid there. A little battle between the Nets there to make, you know, Corpusalo work and the ever gone Bobrovsky, who seems they're going to, he's going to be leaving in the off season. It seems like next year Columbus might go with Kincaid and Corpusalo as their goaltending duel. You have Gustav Nyquist going over to the San Jose Sharks from the Detroit Red Wings for 2019 second and a 2020 conditional third. Toronto made a couple moves in terms of drafting or drafting trading, sorry, for Nicholas Baptiste for future considerations for the Nashville Predators. Big depth move there for the Marlies, and also Nicholas Patin got traded for Par Lindholm that was sent the other way to the Winnipeg Jets. You also have the Jets acquiring Nathan Beaulieu for a sixth-round pick from the Buffalo Sabres. Gabranson goes to Pittsburgh from Vancouver for Tanner Pearson. Marcus Johansson goes from New Jersey to New 
from to Boston for a 2019 second and a 2024. And to round out a little list of trades here, as there was a couple more after this, but I'm only going to touch on this one here. Michael Delzato going to St. Louis from Anaheim for a six. And there's some other minor league deals that happened between Montreal and also Arizona. You had Calgary and LA swing a minor league deal. You have multiple other minor league acquisitions that occurred at the trade deadline. However, Justin, those are kind of some of the trades that we thought people were going to go, and all the people that are on the top 10 of the trade board, a good chunk of them went. Duchesne already went to Columbus. You had that 2019 of Winnipeg go over to the New York Rangers with Hayes. We're going to go around the table here and branch off to what I discussed there with all the trades that happened and just get feedback about those trades. And the one that I'm going to start off with right off the hop is Mark Stone. We're going to have Colin Miller on the show. We're hoping it's going to be next week or the week after. I will verify on the Monday or Tuesday show what day Colin Miller will be coming on, who was also subject to some trade rumors as well that ultimately didn't get moved. And when Mark Stone got dealt to Vegas, I was thinking Colin Miller might be one of the players going the other way, but that would have been quite steep for Vegas to handle Colin having a $3.8 million cap hit for the next two to three years. Definitely, it would be very hard for Vegas to move, especially having a lot of cap uh, in terms of coverage between Tuck, Marceau, now signing Stone. They signed him to an eight-year, 9.5 per. You have Pacioretty on the docket for over a handful of years, probably seven years for Pacioretty. They have a lot of core players there that are together. They're going to be there for a long time. Eric Branstrom going back the other way, big top prospect for Ottawa. People are really underestimating this this prospect i really see potential of him being that second pairing one people see him as a number number one one yes he is a number one pairing one but i do not see them putting branstrom with shabbat i feel like if they were smart they would break up the two in the future and have it just a stellar one two pairing as that's how the modern era of the national hockey league should be and you never know how the draft picks are going to turn out right so overall i will say that i think this was actually a good trade for both teams Ottawa had to get rid of players. They're basically hitting the full reset button in a way. And I'm almost saying that the 2019 first round, first overall pick is going to go to Colorado Avalanche. It's almost a lock. Jack Hughes, almost. I know the draft lottery does a lot of weird things. Okay, but Mark Stone, Vegas, Justin, your reaction? I, I, I think it's a really good move for Vegas. I mean, you get it. Stone's been nothing really short of electric so far this year and an Ottawa team that's been surrounded with nightmares essentially for, for a franchise I mean you look at that team a year ago versus where they are now the team's like the roster's decimated uh, <laughs> and see that picture with, that was uploaded online yeah um, and yeah it, it just blows me out of the water and, and some of the stuff you'd see floating around the internet you know expecting Ottawa to get the, uh, King's ransom essentially for these players you had to think that the only reason they got Brandstrom is because Stone was traded and then signed right away. Yeah. I think that's the only I reason. I think that's why it happens. I, I think yeah. that's... Um, you know, I think the connection there was uh, what the assistant GM was Stone's either coach or general manager for one of his minor league teams, and that was the connection. Yeah. Um, but it's a good, it's great for Vegas, and I honestly think now Ottawa has got a lot of these monkeys off their back. They can focus on rebuilding the team and moving on I, I you know not to jump off the stone thing but I think Ottawa has an okay core there right now you know they got Kachuk uh, White. yeah like um, Shabbat. Shabbat's they're now not they're, they're, it's not all hope is lost and I mean they're gonna have to sign one or two players in the summer because someone has to eat up that salary cap uh, you know I don't know how long Anderson stays there I don't know what's left on his contract but I you can't couldn't see him re-signing you know once he's done he's probably going to move on Uh, but the biggest hurdles I think for the Ottawa Senators are over with and you know we can essentially write them off for the rest of the year Um, but the West as far as the trade as far as the trade deadline goes the West was it was an arms race Uh, everyone in the West was loading up just trying and and whether or, you know some teams did it for better or for worse, I mean we're going to see play out over the next little bit. Um, you know, I think I think Nashville did a lot of movement to a roster that has, tra- has, has treated them pretty good. Um, 
you know, Vegas is a Vegas's roster is a living, breathing, you know, experiment because they're. I mean, year two, that's that's where they're at. And look at the roster; it's insane. And and they have draft picks and prospects. Like, there's a lot of. Like, if you look at their pool of what they can trade and what they can move, like Vegas is a dangerous team still. Um, yeah, I think the Jets are the Jets are pretty strapped oh, now. Haynes, Kevin but, Hayes was a good at though. Good look for the but middle. The, for but the Jets, Jets needed a center, I think. Yeah. Like, I, I, they were they, in they, they, Shane and Stone, but they didn't want to get rid of Rosalvik. And Rosalvik, who was talked highly by Paul Maurice last year on our show, he is. The Jets didn't want to part with that prospect. Uh, like they needed. Yeah, at one point during the day, they said that Patrick Line had been brought up in trade talks, and but I think the Jets just they needed. Paul Stasty again. I mean, you're not going to get him, but no. that's what you needed. That was your and secret Kevin sauce. Could be that fit. He, he could be, but I just don't. I, the, the Rangers I, getting a first for Hayden. The Rangers made out like a bandit in yeah. that deal. I thought they definitely got a good edge on that deal. See how the picks turn out. But look at the other picks, like Dallas Stars traded Zuccarello to the. Uh, uh, sorry, Rangers training Zuccarello yeah, to the Stars, Zuccarello and then he gets home for four to six. He, he looked awesome in he that did. first game for them. He too. did, and then you have other trades like that happened prior to the deadline. Obviously, Duchesne went over to Columbus. That happens after our show on Thursday, actually, essentially right after, and he went for for, for essentially two first round picks. If Columbus resigns Duchesne, they get two first round picks. Did you see the, so. Uh, the video there, he set the plane to pick up his wife and kid. And, and then pick up Dezingle Dezingle. on the way, too. And then Dezingle goes over to Columbus. So there's some trades that happened prior to the deadline. You have Nick Jansen that went over to Washington for Madison Bowie. Two good young prospects are switched between both teams. Detroit walks away with a second rounder on top of that as Washington walks away with a fifth rounder. 2020 second rounder there for the Detroit Red Wings and must improvise. So Ryan Dezingle goes for Anthony Duclair. There was a good prospect with the Ottawa Senators. You never know Duclair might be a good project to try to turn around there. And they also got two second round picks. The Ottawa Center is walking away with a lot of picks and good prospects here. And Brandon Montour going to the Sabres. Big fan of that trade for Buffalo. I'm a big fan of Montour. The Ducks getting a first round pick and Ghoul. You know, they, they essentially, Sabres paid less for Montour than, they, than the Leafs did for Muzzin. It's kind of the example, but they are essentially two different players based on accomplishments. Who, who, who would you rather have? But, but you got to go with sometimes. And, and the Leafs were paying for extra years of contract. Yes, and that's where there's a lot. All of these trades happen. It's actually exciting trade deadline day that I touched on there with all the trades, but also some times before that that led up. You knew that these trades were going to happen with Stone, with Duchesne, and Zingle. You knew those trades were going to occur. I but never would have picked Columbus, though. No, not, not no. in a million years. Columbus looked. And this is what I think. Columbus looked at their division, and I know we're gonna, we're not we're kind of moving on from the Stone thing, as everyone could tell here. We wrapping up that Vegas walked away with a good player there, and obviously Sanders walked with a lot of draft picks. Okay, but Columbus, we'll go to that. Columbus getting McQuaid. Big fan of McQuaid. I don't know where Dubas was on that, but doesn't doesn't matter. I'm not chirping him here. Though. We're not manning the phones, okay? But you had McQuaid, Duchesne, and Dezingle going the other way in Columbus. And Keith Kincaid, if a goalie gets hurt, they got a good insurance there with Kincaid. The you have all in. they're all in, and the reason why they are all in is because when the Islanders are leading your Metropolitan Division right now, and they are a team that doesn't have studded talent down that lineup, unless he's Matthew Barzell. No, no offense leaning, to Josh Bailey. On yeah, and go- Leonard and Gress have been playing absolutely amazing. Columbus looked and said, hey, we get into the playoffs. We have a chance to only get in the playoffs. We can come back and battle this next 18, 17 games and win, the, win our division. They have a chance to win their division, and they were, they were up 2-0 on Washington last year in the playoffs, who ultimately ended up winning the Stanley Cup against Vegas. So... Columbus looked at this this chance of this year saying, okay, we're going to lose Bobrovsky this year. We're going to lose Panarin in after this year. We're going to now maybe lose Duchesne and these guys, but we couldn't resign them. We couldn't get the value we wanted. Why not use them as own rentals and go for it? Is Columbus going to win you the cup? I don't know. They got some sick studs on that back end, though, let me tell you. And Oliver Borkstrand, they got Josh Anderson. That's they a, got a good team there. It's, it's a very diverse roster. Like oh, every, yes. every line is totally different like they're not if you look at Columbus you can't say that they're like a pure scoring team or they're a pure like they've they've got a, a, a little bit of everything like it's I don't know I look at their roster it's fascinating like the way they can score goals but they're tough 
but they got like they have this insane goaltending, but their defense is still really good. Yeah. Like it's a well-rounded roster, and all of a sudden, like in the last week and a half, two weeks, like they've just become this rock-solid team. Uh, and, and like you said, you touched on it. Their division isn't exactly the toughest. You know, like they can. It, it almost seems like it's a perfect storm for the Columbus Blue Jackets this year. It is now. When you look at the at, in the like for the standings, right? You got Tampa Bay in the Atlantic, who is running away with that. All right, well, I think like the, ten the, points the, on anyone who's even close. Uh, to uh, they are at twenty. Yeah, twenty almost. Tw- they're twenty on Toronto, and they're twenty or they're nineteen on Boston for the division. And the Islanders right now are at seventy-nine points, tied with the Capitals. Capitals have two more games. The Islanders. Columbus is fifth in their division with 73 points, one point behind both Carolina and Pittsburgh for third. So I'm going to tell you right now, the Columbus Blue Jackets loaded up, and they are going for that second. They're trying to go for the division, let alone, but they have a chance to get in there. When you're battling for that wild card, you have the Islanders, Capitals, Hurricanes, top three, Lightning, Bruins, Leafs, top three, and the other one. Right now you have Montreal holding a wild card spot. And then you have Carolina holding the other one with Pittsburgh and Columbus breathing down their necks. So, and, and I like that because Tampa Bay might have a first round date with the Pittsburgh Penguins if this keeps up, which ain't going to be easy for them. Columbus Blue Jackets might be a first round matchup if they don't win the if those teams don't obviously climb and win their division. So Columbus went all in to go for it. The Senators sold everything. The Senators right now are last place in the National Hockey League. 18% chance for Colorado to win the lottery. And Colorado is not that best positioned either. So they're, I'll tell you right now, the Colorado Avalanche are tied with the Minnesota Wild, 68 points. St. Louis has just been on, on an absolute fucking, fucking tear. Like, I don't, I, it's been absolutely insane. Jordan Bennington, got to yeah, give him that, kudos. That kid's the doing well. Them has been unbelievable. The Blues didn't touch much. Nothing. Why? Why touch? Exactly. Same in Tampa. Why touch anything? So Calgary didn't make huge splashes either. They didn't go out after Stone and fans were mad. The fans were just like Toronto fans would do a bit. So they were wondering why its moves weren't made. Calgary is 89 points number one in their division by seven points. They are tops in the Western Conference right now, are the Calgary Flames. Sure, they would have been nice to make some ads. But look where you... But why would you? Why? It doesn't make There were ties with Jonathan Quick. I was surprised that there was some rumors of Jonathan Quick there, but the cap is a is an you gotta watch with the cap. You gotta watch what you do. Well why would you cap fuck yourself with something like that? Yeah. Like unless the Kings are gonna retain seventy percent of his salary, which you know isn't happening. <laughs> no, no. You don't you're not interested. And who goes back in that trade? Well that, that's what do you think about it. Who's, that's who's just it who too. Are you why, away from why, the why are you That's a first what for are, sure, what are you not willing two. to subtract from your roster that makes you better? Like you, you could just, have traded this year's first. I get it. If you're a team that's top in your division, top in your conference, it is a good idea to trade your first this year, I think. I think. I, I, I think this is the year you can make that risk based on the class. Under the top 10, I'm not that impressed. I feel like from number – no, I shouldn't say 11. From, but from number 20 to 40 – Anything can happen. I, that's my honest opinion. Now, I know some people might roll their eyes at me for saying that. I don't really have enough time to get into as to why, and I will when we have a draft preview so, show in the summer. But Calgary didn't have to make moves. San Jose, you know, you brought in Gustav Nyquist. You had to make that jump because you want to get up to Calgary. But like, look at San Jose's roster. Yeah, I like their. I how, like it. How does it get better, honestly? What, how does it get better, and what like? Nyquist is what, what was available for what you were willing to part with. And you gave up a good amount to get Gustav I mean, Nyquist. And that's, it's, it's the same thing with the Leafs. I mean, I've been hearing this all week. People have been, Toronto didn't do anything. Toronto okay, didn't we'll do anything. Okay, we'll transition to I, Toronto. I, I, no, it's, it's one of those things you just can't. It's no, there's a lot of teams you can look at. I mean, Boston only has one line, so adding other players is helpful regardless. They added Marcus Johansson. Oh, and Charlie Coyle, I think, is yes, a really good one, too. I, I love that pickup from Boston. Good for you. But okay. like, even look at Montreal. What could you remove from your roster that would have made you... They were supposed to be last in their division this year, over under Ottawa. I think it was... We, la- look at them. we laughed at them nonstop in the summer. 
I mean, like, I'm not, I'm not necessarily eating crow here because it's not like we gave up a three goal lead and shit the bed uh, <laughs> on the weekend. So the Habs are still kind of our bitch. But um, you by know, R, like, you mean Toronto? Yes. Um, I just had to get that out there. I walked into our other, you know, friend of the show, a Sports Center Saturday night. Oh. And I was basically booed out the door uh, because I was wearing my Leafs hoodie. You know, the, uh, the one I didn't wear tonight. Yeah, yeah. Surprise, uh, you should wear it on Yeah, I know. Nights. Uh, yeah. There was a, a couple sitting at a table. I felt terrible for them. Nylander and Matthew's jerseys. Oh. And people were chirping them, everything else. And then that place got so quiet in the second, well, third I can game. imagine all the 3 nothing lead people were. I was getting text messages. Well, there's people standing up at the bar booing me while I'm trying to eat my delicious boneless wings. Oh, like, no, but anyways, back to it. I mean, Montreal... I don't know if there's a lot out there they could have added to make themselves better. Why would they add, though, too? They and don't really need to. Like, some teams are were cap-fucked. I mean, Pittsburgh, I don't understand the Gabranson thing. I'm a, like, I like Gabranson, like, but... Jim, Jim Rutherford, like, he just has a thing. Like, he has to right, make a trade. <laughs> I have to add some old players that the game has passed by, and they're going to fucking look fantastic for me in the playoffs. I like their D. Johnson's I, cheap. Branson's oh. cheap. Wow, well, their their D's. Branson's not that cheap for. No, he's, yeah, it's not. I guess it's not that good. But it's I mean, not they, Jack Jones. They had to add. Pittsburgh had to add someone. Their defense looks worse than ours right now. <laughs> Toronto. Sorry, I, Toronto. Keep, I keep doing this. Like I'm part of the team. No. But. <laughs> but you, you, you talk with um, the um, Toronto Maple Leafs not making move with Wayne Simmons. Okay, Wayne Simmons went for Ryan Hartman in a fourth. I sent you a Snapchat rolling with that saying, Dubis, where are you at? Now, here on the sports show, we talk about every team in fairness. We do have a Maple Leaf segment that we dive into. So it is obviously known that Justin and I grew up Leaf fans. And we're not going to really dive into a Leaf segment today. But we have a couple topics about the Leafs, especially with the deadline and also with John Tavares getting booed. And Long Island right now as the Leafs play New York, and they're currently down 2-1 to one as the Islanders just scored in the second period. Ryan Hartman in a fourth that might turn into a third if they win the first round of the playoffs in 2020. I'm not going to lie. You, it seems that Kasperi Kapanen is going to re-sign in Toronto. They've had their negotiations. Janssen's, I believe, is under negotiation as well. It seems like he's going to sign for an affordable amount as well. Why didn't Toronto make this move is what I was getting asked. And when I looked at the trade, I sat there and said, if I was Dubas, I would have went after Adam McQuaid. I, I, I am a fan of that right-hand shot defenseman. I think that grit would have been nice. I really feel that you could have moved a Borgman in a seventh for that. I feel like something like that could have happened. Ryan Hartman is basically would have been our Connor Brown. That's basically what that would have been. And I say our in terms of pretending that I'm a Toronto Maple Leaf executive. Connor Brown and a fourth for Simmons. Conditional potential third. Now, sure, we could sit here as armchair GMs and think of why this didn't happen. However, maybe Philly didn't want to do that trade to Toronto. Well, and Maybe they said, nah, 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 give us Brown in a second, and then it's done. Well, and that's just it, too. You don't know what the deal was that was presented to Toronto. Why would versus, Philly want Toronto to really skyrocket? And, and, and to be completely honest, I any day of the week will take young legs Connor Brown over used and abused Wayne Simmons. Like, former and, Hound. You know, it, that's fantastic. This former it's, Hound thing that I've been... Well, I've been, loves- everyone's been hearing in the news nonstop. It's, it's getting old. Um, it, it's interesting. He definitely has connections with players. And, you know, you're obviously going to go to that every time. Um, but the Wayne Simmons thing, it just didn't make sense to me. If the Leafs start building themselves to beat only one team that they almost beat with not having John Tavares on the roster last year in the playoffs. And Boston's got a lot older, a lot slower. You know, they're great where they are in the standings, but we just that's everyone's just got to get a ticket to the playoffs. Once you're in there, it's a different game. And to be honest... Tampa could struggle too, you never know. Well, Tampa struggled with the Leafs all season. There's a lot of there's a lot of teams that are really high in the standings that have really struggled to play the Leafs all season. So yes, the monkey off our back is definitely the Boston Bruins. 
and you are want, you mean Toronto? Yes, you want to <laughs> you want to be able to beat them, and so you know, like a guy like Wayne Simmons or a guy like McQuaid, they look like really good ads. But then outside of that series, now what did you remove from your roster? You know, because Connor Brown provides a different element to the to the Leafs than what Wayne Simmons would do. You know. And who else would you have to give up? Who would you have had to give up to, from a quake? Do you think there was something else? I, I don't know if Dubis was knocking at New York's door for McQuaid. I don't really think Dubis was. I, I think Dubis was. He was in talks with the Rangers with Kreider. Maybe McQuaid did get brought up. Then you have the talks with Simmons that got brought up. Dubis does, does not want to part with prospects of the future. He said in a, in a press conference, it's working for Boston to make these trades. In the deadline, it's working for them to not rush and continue the course. That's, that's how They're two years ahead of their plan. That's how their roster's built. Like the, yeah. Toronto's roster isn't built like that. It, and now, I get the defensive thing. Is now Dermott's going to be out week to week as the quote-unquote the shoulder injury. Gardner is, I believe. I mean, uh, they, they like said he's, he, at the beginning of the week, they said he went and talked to a surgeon. So, I mean, that's... It's not the best news for Gardner. No. You might look at another week-to-week circumstance there with Gardner. Okay, now we have Orshiganov getting the chance in the lineup. You have Martin Marinson playing in the lineup, which I'm not a big fan of. Well, listen, I, and you I, know, but, in, but, in defense of Martin Marinson, in every Marlies game I've watched this season, and my watch count is at about 13 whole games, uh, He's he's been... I'd say in a good 70 to 80% of those games, he's been the best player on the ice. Uh, he has this calming effect for that team. He Even better than Kale Rosen? Yes. Because Rosen's been so hurt and so in and out of the lineup all season. Marinson's been a constant. And, you know, Sheldon Keefe's done something with him down there that's calmed down his game. It's matured his game. He's not the same running scared Martin Marinson you saw last year that we killed. Like, go back and listen to some of our shows last year. We killed that poor guy. Like, I think every show did. And, and he's a totally different player this year. Like, he's he's manned up. Are you... Okay, adding the depth in Toronto, we can't... We're not... We, like we said, we're not having a leaf segment you here. Can, we're just can, veering you off. You but, can beat the depth at, like but, a dead horse. But I would love to... I'm trying to see if I can get Dubas put on the show. And I want... I, <laughs> He can only say so much. He said certain things on the drive. I get it. I, I, I'm not a GM. I'm not doubting Dubas because the kid knows what he's doing. Kid by me, he's four years older than I am, I believe. I think I actually know even four or five. So I'm going to say I think trades are presented. He just didn't feel good about doing them. And ultimately, we got to trust in that. The kid walked into a meeting this summer with... Mike Babcock and Brennan Shanahan, apparently Dubas was the reason. Dubas was the reason that really sold. That's what Babcock and Shanahan said. Shanahan and Babs were there, and I speak of Babs that were best friends, but, like, I, I mean, they were there for his moral encouragement, well, this, giving him that. That's this, what Lou was to him, too. This is the roster that he put together and the team that he put together in the summer. Why would he not want to see it through to the playoffs? I mean, Muzzin was a good ad. That opportunity that presented itself, there and was. I think that was the trade. That's what you were going to see. The Patan trade, the only reason that happened is because Patan had another year left at RFA. Lindholm didn't. You control the players' rights for one more year. They can plan their salary cap cheap. for He's one more be year. Cheap. That's all it is, is cost assurance for what he can do with the roster moving forward. And I'm sure on the draft floor and the free agency floor, you'll probably be a little bit active again, especially if the D needs some revamping. But despite that, winners and losers of the deadline, I'm going to go Vegas as an A+. 100%. A hot, I, uh, like, I I, Eric Brandstrom is a great prospect, don't get me wrong, but if people want to rewind for a second, Vegas had a lot of prospects. You don't remember what they did two years ago in their draft? Hi, uh, we're going to take so-and-so. Oh, no, 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 you're not. We want so-and-so. Oh, are you, you sure about that? Because we can take him. Okay, listen, listen. Let's make a deal here, okay? I want to make a little deal. I'll give you a first-round pick. No, no, no. Up that. Okay, we'll give you a first-round pick and uh, William Carlson. Okay. So we get William Carlson in a trade. The guy gets 42 goals. So I'm telling you right now that Vegas has prospects. They have goaltending prospects. Subban being one. 
They got defensive prospects. Got some young depth there. Vegas can get rid of that. Eric Brandstrom. Yes, he would have been great to have on that team. But you know what? Hey, we're going to get Mark Stone for eight years now. It's not like they treated Eric Brandstrom and got nothing in return. They just signed one of the best power forwards in the National Hockey League to a contract. So A-plus win for Vegas. Nashville, I am going to give you a A on the play as well. And I will say right now that adding of Wayne Simmons, I like that ad. I do. And the other winner... Our uh, trade deadline is the Columbus Blue Jackets. Those will be the three guys that we're teams that we're definitely going to pinpoint for sure. Losers of the deadline. No, the Ottawa Senators are not on this loser board. Okay, they are not. They're in the middle of the pack. They were in the cusp of maybe being winners. Maybe they could have got more, but let's backtrack to what they got for Duchesne to Zingle. Okay, they got seconds and firsts like you wouldn't believe, but ultimately they're not getting that first overall pick. So that's why they didn't break the A-plus board. They're in the B-plus board for my eyes right now. Team that kind of lost out on the deadline, I really feel like that I thought that they were going to be more active. And no, not San Jose. They're in the B category as well. Also Boston was and Winnipeg was. The loser category in my eyes, and I said that they didn't do anything and might be good not to do anything, but I really want to go the Calgary Flames. I really feel that Calgary, since the prospect they have picked that they could have afforded to give up, I feel like they could have made a splash for one of Nyquist, one of, I don't think Stone was in the books after seeing what Vegas assigned him for. I think that was a big part of the deal. I think they could have really made a move to try to add their goaltending, I'm not really sold out on, but again, you can't ever doubt Mike Smith. Okay, the guy's a stud, especially when it comes to the big game. So I got to give them a little shout out saying I feel like they're one of the more losers of the deadline. And the other team is the New York Islanders that were losers of the deadline. You're first in the Metropolitan, and luck, yeah, I love the cliche they've been saying all show that if you don't need to make moves, don't, but you guys need to make moves because Columbus and Pittsburgh did. Look at some guys that made moves. The Western Conference obviously is a big A+. plus. The trade deadline, they improved because teams ahead of them also improved. Nashville had to improve because of Winnipeg. Vegas had to improve because San Jose and Winnipeg and Nashville did. At the end of the day. And now I want to go to these Islanders for a minute, Justin. We had a full little reaction here. I'm going to give the trade deadline A throughout our whole table. I'm sure you can agree. Yeah, no, it was uh, definitely a little more action-packed than previous years. Um, I mean, the Senators, I think, were the biggest story for me, and I thought the Senators were probably the biggest winners out of anyone. Or the Senators fans. Um, because they, they, we, we as fans, you know, Toronto fans have been through this. You know, we've been sold the line of hope a couple times, and the rebuild didn't work, and the rebuild didn't work. And, you know, eventually it did. Uh, so it sucks to go through that as fans. And, I mean, this will transition well into our Islanders segment because the Ottawa Senators fans still turn out better than the New York Islanders, who are last in the league in fan turnout. The Ottawa Senators, with all the turmoil the team has had this year, still manages to come close and, you know, put a, put a decent crowd in their rink every night. I'm going to say this right now. Okay. You have the... New York Islanders, okay, that had moved out of their barn, went back, uh, moved around. They're like a they're 31st. They're literally 31st in the league in standings. Or in standings. Sure, I wish. For their sake, the way they're treating John Tavares right now. But uh, nice way to put it. 12,073 fans that they're averaging a game. They can fit more in that Coliseum. I know they can. They can actually fit 17,289, okay, I believe is the exact, I know I might get credit, I think they might be able to fit a bit less, I'm kind of looking at a number here online through ESPN, that definitely, I, 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 seemed, think, I think it shrunk a little bit I when think, the stadium got renovated, so I they think, come back. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think there's some changes, let's just say in between 15 to 17,000, okay? I think 15 is probably a reasonable Okay, we'll go to that number, okay? So they don't sell out. Toronto? Sells out every fucking game. Chicago, despite where they were all year, guess what? They're still getting 23000 a game. Why don't I keep going down the list? The Edmonton Oilers are on that list in the top 11. They're 11th in the league with 18000 And they're brutal to watch as Toronto fans witnessed the other night. No offense to Connor McDavid. 
The Winnipeg Jets, someone's going to say, well, the Winnipeg Jets are 25th in the standings to be deceiving. They have 15,000. That's all they seat in the Bell MTS Center. So, so wait, you're telling me, Dave, that by these numbers, what we're understanding by these numbers, these Islanders fans aren't the truly heartbroken fans that we saw crying in all these videos this week about their captain, their captain that hurt their feelings, so all six of them could make it to a game all season? Are these the, f- the same fans we're talking these about? These are the fans. And this is the same team that's playing an injury-depleted Toronto right now without Kadri, Dermott, Ant Gardner, and Jake Garrett Sparks in that right now, okay? And so these, these same fans that have a playoff team. First place. First place, first place in the playoff team, team yeah. are the ones that can't get their butts to the rink to make an effort. And the ones that were crying that they wish they had it back at the Old Coliseum. Or either of their rinks. They can't make it to either of their rinks. Either rink. The Barclays yeah. Center didn't do any fucking better. These fans are sitting there saying, oh, we miss you, John. Dear John. I, for, I didn't fully understand. I turned off that video. I mean, the Listen, trip- Islanders fans. John Tavares left your team. He left. I mean, what, Sorry, he came to Toronto. What I have to offer on this, I, 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 all my respect for these people went out the window when they started throwing stuff at him. And the snake. And like, throwing snakes, throwing jerseys. Tonight. This is tonight. Like, you guys are obviously Mets fans because you can't even hit him with a jersey or a snake. Like, come on. Like, you're not only brutal hockey fans, you're brutal throwers, and you're obviously Mets fans. So you don't really know anything about sports. <laughs> and I'll say this right now. You, you're telling me that the Islanders right now, the people are going to say how they're better off without John. Listen, John Tavares is a franchise centerman. And this is the same guy that you were begging to re-sign. So I know you guys don't really mean that, he's, that you don't miss him. Trust me, next year when your little Cinderella story comes out here and you're a little bit more fucked, when it comes to players, or, or, until Noah Dobson comes in and finally cores out your defensive core as Boychuk gets a year older and eats up more of your cap. Or in three years when Barzell does the same thing. So, or, or when Barzell leaves. you got to really think here, Islanders fans, okay? I love how you're trying to put yourself on the map in terms of Toronto. You might win this game tonight, you might lose. We don't know. Toronto fans, I know you sure for sure win, but it doesn't matter. The Islanders have the worst fan average in the National Hockey League, and they're crying about John Tavares right now. John left the uh, uh, le- left tight. that organization. He playing in empty rinks. Yeah, empty rinks, and he spent eight years with the organization with having little to no success. Does Toronto have a bunch of success? Like, no, but they're starting to. Matthews has been in the league since the first year. We made the playoffs. Every year he's been there. So Matthews might want to resign more after his contract. And if Matthews leaves when he wants to free agent, he has every right. Well, I'll be well, pissed. That's, that's sure, but we have every right. But, uh, we you have every right. We don't have a right. Like, as, as fans, you don't have a right to throw shit at the player. Like, that's classless. That really is. I he don't, was your captain and your commu- like, franchise. We're not... If Austin Matthews decides to go and be the face of the Arizona Coyotes at some point, it is what it is. I watch Peyton Manning get cut and go to the Denver Broncos win a Super Bowl. It happens. Teams move on from players. Players move on from teams. It's life. And I know fans get upset, but it's not like he requested a trade. He took his he, life, and he wanted to go somewhere he wanted to play. He played the entire contract that he signed with your franchise. Without he, putting drama into it. He did absolutely nothing. To, with the media, nothing. He did everything within the terms of the contract that he signed with the team. If the Islanders fans have anyone to be mad at, be mad at Di Pietro still. Go up to your Nesson comment booth there and ask Di Pietro for the 15 years and $45 million back. Like he's still on the payroll. They just moved him up into broadcasting, so they got something for the money. No one's mad at him. A lot of things. You can't get mad when someone offered a contract and wants to move on. And Islanders fans, we were just saying here on the Game Sports Show that you guys are being absolutely classless. People ask me, Dave, would you, you're going to do the same with Matthews if he leaves. No. Nope. If Matthews requests a trade and that, that's a diff- that's a and does thing. things, I will be a little bitter. But he's he's it's 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 not it's, there yet. It's it Tavares didn't do that. Tavares was your captain, led and loved bleeding the ugly jersey colors that you guys absolutely absolutely wear. No offense, not a big fan of the Islanders colors, I mean, but again, that is that's either there or there. I'm just saying right now, he bled your colors. And he bled now the blue and white. You guys might win this game. You guys might win another game. 
But we'll see in the long run what happens in Toronto between the Islanders and Toronto. Don't remember what happened in the playoff series back in the early thousands? I do. One of the things that resonated me with the most is when John Tavares signed with the Leafs. And I mean, we'll, we got to cut this short soon. But yeah. he said, it's nice to come to Toronto and I can leave things in my locker. Like he said, he played on junior teams where he could leave his deodorant in his locker and come back because that was his locker. His enti- entire time in New York, he had to take his stuff home. Because, you know, you're either playing at Barclays, you're playing at the Coliseum. And that wasn't the entire time he was there. But you always had, like, when, when you're an NHL professional franchise and your captain's complaint about the team is that he can't leave anything in his locker, like, that's pretty sad. It doesn't, it like doesn't that, feel too that's, professional. That's, that's worse than hearing about players in Boston complaining they had to pay for their own Gatorade. Yeah, no. <laughs> this like, isn't the Oakland A's and Moneyball. We have to pay for Papa Dollar in the top machine. We had a little discussion about the trade deadline, some winners, some losers, some trades that we reacted, values. We talked about the Tavares booing today as the game goes on in the back on here for Toronto, New York, as midway through the second period, still 2 1 Long Island, as the Leafs are on the power play currently in our broadcast. I will say right now, Islanders fans, just remember the good times you had with John. I know the team didn't have success. Oh, wait! Maybe that's why he left. Maybe clue two, two and two together equals four. Justin, you and I got to cut this short because I have to boogie to go play. Well, I'm very doubtful to play, actually, but I have to go to the rink to watch some hockey. Some Mayor's Cup hockey here in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. And as I mentioned, in the first part of the show, the Sioux Thunder Bridge Alumni Game, this Saturday, March the 2nd, 3.30. Make sure you're out there. And if you're still an alumni, don't hesitate to reach out. It's still not too late to sign up for that. Now, I will say, Justin Heichel, the Leafs has led a shorthand and goal. It's now 3-1 Islanders. We're not going to comment on that right now. We don't know what's going to happen. By the time the show's uploaded, the game will be a final. And people that didn't hear it live. I want to say thank you to you for coming on here tonight. And you and I will be back here next week. We're back to a full course load, I'd like to say, next week. Four shows a week as we had some scheduling conflicts. And we'll see you next week, pal. Well, I'll be there. I mean, I'm finally feeling alive again. So as long as we don't get another 76 feet of snow, we should be okay. Stay in my live at Northern Superior Brewing Company. We're going to be at the Wicked Sister on Monday. And then we'll be back at Icebreakers on Tuesday, Sports Center Wednesday, and back here at Northern next week. Thursday, as I mentioned at the top of the show as well. Hopefully you enjoyed tonight's show. I want to say thank you to Justin Heichel, to the staff here at Norwich Superior Brewing Company, including John Cavalier and Blake Winter in particular, for their great hospitality as always. To you, the listeners, for making us a part of your night tonight. And also, I'm going to say right now that if it wasn't for the great sponsors that we have here on the Game Sports Show, it wouldn't be this same way as it is now, and also to you, the listeners. I want to say thank you to Norris Superior Brewing Company, Sports Center Bar and Grill, The Wicked Sister, Silver Creek Golf Course, Icebreakers, The Salon, North Shore Sports and Auto, Northern Quitters in Need, Big Brother, Big Sister, Discover the Canvas, Sue Peary Pro Shop, and Eagle 95.1 as well. And I must say as well, the Northern Critters, I must give a little shout out, we get our dog tomorrow, do Day and I in our apartment. So we get our dog that we are fostering. His name is Kendrick. If you want to foster or adopt, definitely go that way through Northern Critters and check out their event that they have on Facebook as well for tomorrow at 5 o'clock. And this is Dave McKay here from North Superior Brewing Company reminding you, the listeners, until next week, keep your stick on the ice, swing your bat, catch your touchdown, drain your threes, and shoot your shots. Booyah.